Hello, and welcome to the very first ever intercontinental edition of Painters Motivating Painters Review. Sorry for the minor delay. Normally, we would have had this video up about a week ago, but I was moving from Ireland to the United States, where I am now, where it is really hot. Jim, head over for you. Really hot. Very, very hot. Yeah. And, and humid. Everyone is hot, but that's okay. <laughs> we have a bunch of really lovely submissions for August. Uh, and we're just going to get right into it. Uh, if this is your first time seeing the channel, Painters Motivating Painters is a Facebook group uh, where people share their kind of hobby pictures and insights and all that kind of stuff. And we do these monthly reviews as part of that. Uh, if you're interested in having your own pictures up on this channel, all you have to do is join the group and stick them in the event that will be up for September. Uh, so our first entry was Jim Kearney with another excellent diorama here. Uh, West Front, 1974. In one of the trench scenes where, like World War One or Two, it never ended, kind of thing. So this is really cool. Um, you said you, you don't have a kind of a central character, but it's like trench photographs. I totally got that. It's got that kind of feel of them, like that film 1918 or like Dunkirk or any of those war films, Western, not quite on the Western Front. Um, uh, I quite like your use of colors. You've got this kind of blue and orange contrast going on. That's very interesting. Makes it feel kind of like it's at night. Um, my first impressions were kind of like that it was in space because of the backdrop. I guess that's meant to be an explosion, but I kind of thought it's those Death Corps of Krieg models, which are like their aesthetic is World War One in space, but it has a kind of a, a 40K feel because of that. Um, and then you got these steamp steampunk robot guys, which kind of change that up a bit. So that's a nice touch. Um, the Backdrop, I thought it's really effective, but like I said, it looks a bit spacey. Um, also, I think maybe you could reduce the brightness of it a touch just on the orange, uh, as it is kind of a little bit distracting, but then again, it might be different in person because obviously we're just looking at the photographs rather than the real diorama. Um, and then in terms of having a central figure, I think I really like, like you have a lot of people facing away from us, but that makes sense because it's French, and we get the idea that there's no man's land on the other side. These two guys guarding the door, and um, so it is like photography from that era. But I think you could maybe focus it a little bit more. So this big robot dude with the hammer, who's kind of like in the foreground, and he's kind of out of focus. And um, again, like you know, if you were a if you were a war photographer, you'd try and get the kind of door there centered, and the two guards on either side to kind of set the scene, and uh, because or if you think about a war film, they have a lot of kind of symmetry to it. So the central element, I suppose, here is the door into the command tent there or whatever. So I think maybe if, I don't know exactly how you took the photo, but maybe it extends more on the left. But if that was a little bit more in the center, I think that would kind of um, make it a bit more like, photogenic or cinematic or whatever. Uh, but it's definitely like, you know, we can tell kind of what's going on. Uh, and it's nice that it is mostly kind of one-sided. Sometimes the dioramas, the temptation is to put in loads of detail that you can't see from one view. And uh, the sign, the signage is like excellent as for last time. It's really, really effective and really um, helps set the atmosphere in the scene. Uh, and I'd really love the way you've done the wood, like the wood grain and the colors of everything to it. It's just really rich and really textured looking. Uh, and again, it's in that kind of orange palette that then sets off with the blue. Um, so yeah, hopefully that is helpful for you. It's uh, great to see another uh, diorama from you. So, Jim, what do you think? Uh, yeah, much better use of the space this time, um, Jim. Much less negative area that's just not really saying much. Um, I really like also like the color palette, like this, these splashes of blues and orange that are breaking up this otherwise huge sea of brown, but. I'm not saying the sea of brown is out of place. It's perfectly in place because it's muddy, it's rusty. There's a lot of wood and weathering and, you know, it's all perfectly, you know, um, plausible that it's there. So, yeah, just those little bursts of colour breaking it up. The small details as well are really, really good, like, you know, like the ammo crate and the little posters on the... Uh, on the fencing and stuff and how you've done, like, this barbed wire at the top. It's all really cool. Um, so yeah, mostly it's, it's really, really strong. Uh, I think, um, your pictures, I think are like blowing out some of the, 
the highlights, like it seems really bright. Um, the lighting that you took the photos in. So you're getting quite a lot of aggressive shadows in it and like blowing out of colors and like sheen and stuff on the model. So it's, you know, it's do yourself a favor next time and just have more sort of diffused lighting. You can tell here from like these really strong shadows. That basically means that your lighting situation is too strong to take pictures. So just dial that back next time. You can just use like a sheet of paper to, to fuse it or get like a like a more diffused light bulb. Um, that's really, really helpful. Or, or just less directed, you know, bounce the light around the, um, the diorama as you're taking pictures. That will really help. Um, and then for the... Um, as Matt said, like the model like placement and not having a central figure. Um, I think it's kind of like generally a bit of a challenge to have things facing away from your viewing angle. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six models that are not facing the viewer and you've got two that are. So I think it'd be okay if you had, you know, you spun that round the other way. Um, so an interesting way you could maybe do that. Also, there's nothing really like happening with the models. They're all in very kind of stationary, static poses, um, apart from the guy that's been hung up in the barbed wire. Um, so perhaps it would be like next time you do something like this, maybe try and have something like busting over the top and knocking people aside. So they're kind of like side on, but you're also getting a bit of a story to it because it's, this is a very static scene at the minute. I mean, the backdrop's doing a lot for it you know, to give it this dynamic movement and flare and shards and stuff flying around. Um, but all of the models are kind of just very static, and I think it's a bit of a challenge for you. Um, so, yeah, that was just an idea, to have something busting through, knocking people aside, um, and then you've got a central figure. You could then play with lighting on that central figure to make it a bit more interesting, that sort of stuff. Um, but generally, on the whole, I think um, it's, a, it's a really nice diorama, and um, I think you should be proud of it. So, um, nice one, Jim. Thank you very much. Um, scrolling up to um, this shiny beastie now from Christian. Um, very proud of this, and so you should be. Um, mm -hmm. Largest figures ever done, all done with brush and a little bit of a makeup sponge. Uh, treasures done with deco, glitter, and mini rhinestones. Um, so, yeah, super impressive. Massive ting. I mean, I, I can't really guess, but I, I think this is like a couple of feet, if not more, across. Um, so, yeah, I applaud your effort, dude. This thing is very very striking to look at um and i think you've done a really great job of uh rendering the gold um mostly there's good contrast in it shadows where you'd expect to see it and stuff uh highlights um very nicely placed i love the fact that it's so warm as well and you've got some of the um same toners down in the treasure as well so that's all really strong working um the eyes i thought could be a little bit more lively so you can find a a zoomy uppy um so like just lining the edge of the eye with um a black just to kind of set it out from like the bottom of the eyelid um then you could there's loads of space there to do like a, a transition in that green of, of some sort and then obviously uh, the life light as well is missing so you need like a br pure brilliant white reflection in it to give it that um it's kind of like the wet glossy sheen that you know when people um are alive they always have that reflection in their eyes always um so that would be a nice little touch to um, bring it up a not um uh, and possibly an osl effect as well maybe if you wanted to go that far uh just a thought uh then i thought uh some of the bones on the wing could do with being a different color which ones was i talking about uh these ones under here i think so they're like the same size and shape as just these black ones and I think that would just be a nice way to break up the gold on the wing. I mean, if if this is like a, a reference of an actual creature from a, a, a game or something, then ignore all that, but I don't recognise it. But I, it just looked like an opportunity there to bring in some of this black. Um, and you've done a nice job like with the striations of these horns and stuff, so I thought that looked cool. And then the only other thing um, I thought was that the silver plates, you could maybe just separate them. Just to just shade them towards the edges in a very dark line, like where they um, intersect with the gold ones. You see what I mean? It's kind of a bit washy where they where they come together. So yeah, just separating these silver plates out from the gold, I think would would be really strong as well, and that would make that silver really really stand out as well. So, um, but on the whole, yeah, really really nice stuff, man. This thing looks awesome. So uh, nice job, Matt. Yeah, I agree. I'm 
very impressive that you were able to get such a smooth and incredibly shiny finish just using the brush. Like I assumed it was some sort of very special uh, airbrush technique or whatever you use to do this, but it's super good. And like that, because it's such a wonderful kind of lustrous sheen, that's doing a huge amount to pick out the volumes of everything. Like we can see like the top of everything is reflecting your light more than the bottom. Uh, I definitely agree with Jim on the silver to gold. That's always a bit of an issue because what happens is, you know, if you put a silver and a gold material beside each other, the highlight, like the light that's reflected off them will run across the two surfaces and then it'll like blur them together in your eye. So always having a dark line around it does it goes a long way to to separate them from each other. Uh, and as well on the eyes, it might be cool to do a gem effect. Like imagine you have like crystal gem eyes, that'd be cool. Um, and it, I think you could maybe integrate, if you wanted to add more color, like using like a non-metallic method, you could, uh, I'd go with green. You could add like, say to some of these spikes, you could have like a bit of green on them to break them up. Whereas like mustaches could have a tiny, like a little green wash. Um, or like in around the eyes, like Jim said, with an OSO of green. But again, that's if you don't want to, like I think the, the whole it's a living gold thing is working pretty well. Uh, but if you were adding like a shadow color or what have you, I would go with a green because that's what the color is like. Great work. Uh, really like unusual figure as well. And oh yeah, and good work on the treasure when it was like scale appropriate and anything. I assumed it was kind of part of the kit or whatever that you got it with. So good work on putting that together yourself. Okay, Michael Smith submitted Captain America from Marvel Crisis Protocol, trying to push the contra saturation and contrast, and red, white, and blue, and a man for the first time. Cool. Uh, yeah, this is very well painted. It's a very small figure. These Marvel Crisis Protocols, you know, they're true scale, or close enough, and not especially big. So very impressive how kind of clean you got everything painted. Uh, the saturation definitely is working like everything is really true blue and really red red um, and they're not kind of jarring or fighting for attention you've got the shadows get less saturated and the highlights and the blue get more saturated well, I suppose on both of them they get more saturated less saturated when they get whiter days so like it's it's very good in terms of balance uh, I really like the way the different materials sell as well like you've got this kind of almost denim look for his uh, main suit and then his boots and his gloves read as kind of like more like a suede kind of material. And then the shield is obviously metallic looking. So great work on all that. Uh, a couple of pointers I would say, maybe reserve your white, like your true white on your fabrics a bit more. So I'm thinking like your little eerie things, they're like quite gray um, and they can maybe have a little bit of white highlight, but you want to be careful um, about overdoing it. So like, maybe like, think of say, certain areas, your white doesn't go to your true white as the, the highlight, it goes to like a close to white gray, uh, just to draw focus in. Cause I think there isn't a huge amount of focus to its face. I'm looking more kind of towards his midriff and the shield. Cause he got a lot of the white on there and like that star and things. And he doesn't have much skin or anything to kind of draw a huge amount of focus into the face. So you kind of have the A, for his America or Avengers, I'm not sure. And then like a little ear tuft thing being the area with the maximum white of the clothing. I think that would go on. And you could do a little line effect as well on the star. The shield uh, looks really good. Um, I think the reflections are like, it's reading as being a non-metallic red. Uh, the white looks a little bit more like it's kind of weathered white if that makes sense white nmm is extremely challenging so i wouldn't worry too much about that um but i would make the highlights if possible more um triangle shapes they look a little bit they look a little bit narrow and they look a little bit um, yeah just tight in if you look because this isn't a it's not a circle like a shield a dome so if you look at like a reference image of a symbol like a drum symbol it has these like triangular highlights that get smaller as they go towards the center. You've got a little bit of that, but it should be like the whole way. Like you need to do like a, like an overall highlight that goes down through the materials, uh, the size and shape, because it's not really like 
different bands of materials, one shield that should have like stripes running of highlight running in towards the center and they get really small and tight at the center and broader towards the edge. And then you could maybe have like, for secondary highlights here because any like particularly like dome surfaces like this will pretty much have a secondary highlight that is the same but weaker at an angle to the main. So I'd look up a reference image symbols I find are really good for like circular saw blades. They always have them online photographed in really strong lighting and you can kind of see that um, like radial kind of highlight that you get on that kind of surface. Uh, but yeah, really good work. Uh, and again, really challenging to get these, these uh, NMM in these different materials and colors down. And I think you've done a great job of it. Uh, keep up the good work. Jim? Yeah, much the same. Really nice, um, especially the blue that's popping. This looks really good. Um, as Matt said, just a bit more highlight on like the head area would be sweet. Um, <clears throat> and something else I thought just to add to uh, Matt's thoughts on the shield is to, I, don't, I can't remember if you said it, to be honest, um, is to add another one of these highlights going um, sort of, it doesn't have to be like at 90 degrees, this one. So you've got a cross, but you could be like just slightly off of the 90 degree angle so rather than running sort of across it this way it'd be sort of just slightly off um because it it would the shape of it and the fact that he's in a very general um lighting you would get you would get a highlight running down each side of the dome if that makes sense um so yeah just another thought there but yeah definitely what matt said about broadening these highlights on the shield I'd definitely help pop that up as well so um but yeah really crisp really clean um really nice model uh again given its scale so yeah nice one michael thank you very much uh okay william uh he wants feedback on the osl uh friend wanted models painted as a memento uh so uh this elf mage has found an orb of orcus um so he impressed him with the idea of glow effects and now he wants to do something with it um so there's a few things i think firstly um the nice things about it so it's well separated it's clean it's smooth and that's all very nice like the figure itself is actually painted really nicely very tiny as well and got the eyes in so very good um the osl isn't really working though for me for a couple of reasons um the first one that jumps out is that that ball is black essentially and the cast glow is sort of purpley. So um, number one rule, that has got to be a lot brighter than anything else that it's affecting with its light. So obviously this needs to be a very, very bright purple going up to, you know, almost, almost pure white in some places. Um, and then the glow that's affecting him wants to be really the strongest like on this cuff and then as it gets towards him it gets weaker and weaker so the glow cast that you've got at the minute is all the same tone and it's all the same intensity and it's appearing in places where it probably well no sorry i should say it's not appearing in some places where it probably should like higher up under this sleeve so you've got it down here but you haven't got it there and then like on this arm so there's a few ruffles on his uh, robe there. So it would be catching like the top edges of it. So, um, yeah, you need to you need to brighten up this ball big time first and then go back in with um, the glazes or the dry brushing or both or whatever. And the, the, the effect has got to be really strong on this sleeve. And then as it, it probably doesn't want to, because he's quite well lit, it probably doesn't want to go any further than like this sort of area here. You've got to think of it as like a globe because this is a globe and the light travels out in all directions. So it probably doesn't want to go much further than his shoulder and then like the top of his hip. So where it's coming like down onto the books here and the book over here and like way up onto his brow, it's just far too strong given the amount of light that he's in. And then also, having said all that, you also need to paint really, really strong shadows in as well. So wherever there's a purple bit of light there needs to be a very strong shadow behind it so a good example would be this little shadow here on the sleeve um yeah so there's loads of good videos on this that will show you much better than i can ever explain it so if you look at um uh, vince venturella on youtube or squid mars got a great video on it uh zumikito 
has got them. Literally just OSL YouTube. You've probably done it already, but just go back and really analyze what it what it is that they're saying and then apply it to this. And you'll you'll see the elements that, that you're missing here. I think you'll be able to pull it off quite well because what you've you're like glazed in purple wise is really smooth and the mini's painted really nicely. So um, it's just a case of just practicing that execution. And really the main thing that sells it is that the source itself has got to be the brightest thing. That's so important. Um, otherwise it just breaks the whole effect. So um, yeah, I hope that's not too harsh and it's um, read the way that it's intended um, just to help you. But um, yeah. Um, oh, the other thing I thought, maybe you could get some more of these super thin crispy lines that you've got going on here. Just add some more of those to this text to fill the book out a bit. I thought that looked a bit, um, a little bit odd that it's sort of on one half of the page, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I think you just fill that out a little bit more. That looked nice too. Um, but yeah, I think this could be fun. So have a crack at it, man. Uh, I hope it goes well. And post it back here if, if it's successful, please, William. Uh, Matt, what do you think? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It does look like a very small figure and, uh, again, a, a really challenging subject matter. I think we've often had that idea of what if something was like glowing black, but unfortunately, you have, because it's evil, you know, it's emitting black light. Um, but, I mean, that doesn't happen in reality, so it's very hard to represent it because obviously darkness is just the absence of light. But oftentimes you'll see like if something's meant to be like dark energy, it's purple, so that was a good choice for it. But I'd agree with what Jim said on the orb needs to have like some really bright, you've got a little bit of a swirl in it, but some really bright highlights where it goes like purple and up to white in there, kind of give the impression that it's like absorbing all the light and then kind of like radiating it as this evil kind of purple radiation from it. Uh, and again, having your own strong shadows in there will do it uh, a lot uh, of help with that. Uh, I think it's a nice kind of, I like the tonality of everything, the way he's blue and you've got this kind of purple glow cast onto him. Like it's very, um, like it is setting that scene, you know, like he's found this evil artifact type of thing and he's got the box as well to go with it. And I really like the way he's done the fabrics with that kind of like glossy sheen to them. That's just like inside. Um, and then the only other very small thing is I'd say if you're submitting again, maybe make the pictures a little bit bigger, uh, just because the resolution isn't super good. So when you zoom in, you can't necessarily make out uh, every last little detail. And it looks like it is painted, you know, really well you know, on a small scale. So it'd be great to see that in, in the photographs. Um, so, and I hope your friend is happy with all the actors on it. Okay, next one we've got. Jonathan Eka wanted to do this pretty cool thing where he painted this bust and he gave us like a log of how much time he spent on everything and did it seven days, 12 hours, trying to think of anything to make more efficient. Uh, and to be honest with you, Jonathan, I looked through all the times and like 12 hours turnaround for this kind of bust, this kind of standard is really, really good. Um, it didn't really look like there was a lot of wasted time in there. I think maybe between like three and four hours you said that you were blocking in like the fur and some other elements which seemed like it took a long time but you also said you're refining the face and like if you, you spent two hours refining the face that would have been fine so you spent an hour just looking at the face that probably would have been time well spent as well because when it comes to busts it's a game of numbers you know and um, takes a lot longer than you would think for a standard figure um, whatever it would, the rule of thumb is multiply it by three or multiply it by four um, and especially this bus if busts are harder or take exponentially more time if they have more area so like head neck and shoulders 12 hours for head neck and shoulders would have been still a very good turnaround when you add in like the, the back and the waist and all these other elements like the fur because everything has to be painted at such a high standard that just it gets exponentially more and more time needs to be spent on it. And then female figures uh, take more time again because you want to have really high contrast and smoothness, which are not easy to get at the same time. So I think for 12 hours, like this is a really good result. Uh, I wouldn't, I couldn't really pick anything that seemed like it was not time well spent. I heard there's a couple of little things I thought. Um, might be help you a little bit to shave some time off it, but it'll only be minimal. 
Uh, there's a way when you do freckles, Sergio Calvo uh, had a video where he's painting this like demon angel lady and he did the freckles with an airbrush and a paintbrush and he just went Boop, and spattered her with it and that put the, gave you the semi-random pattern of fre freckles if you have the nerve for that. Um, and also, because the other thing is that your freckles, this is a separate note, you've got a lot of freckles here on the tops of her cheeks and you don't really have enough on her forehead. So freckles, you get them in the T-zone, so down here, and then across and forehead as well. Uh, so I just look up some reference for that. Uh, it looks like there's too many here and they go a bit down too low for how much freckles she has over. And then the other thing is you might want to paint her hair initially a dark brown instead of a black, because it's often like you can airbrush it dark brown and that'll give you a little bit like of a mid-tone there already before you go straight up the um, the highlights and think about how you want to do materials because you've got some NMM on there uh, and if you want to save time it's quicker to not do it as NMM either do it as true metallic metal or have them just be like stone or like some sort of like like brass that's covered in verdigris or something that isn't super reflective because again every different material you add on to a bust again exponentially makes the time take longer and um, I think this is really good in terms of the skin has a great run of, of value to it and very good hues. I love the way her skin's like a bit redder, like compressed around her clothes. Uh, you know, you've got the redness in the lips uh, and you've got like more the really great kind of light in around the face drawing her attention up there. So like that's really, really good work. Uh, you've got the, the eyebrows painted in, the headband looks really good. Uh, the the NMM kind of straps and things could have more refinement, but that's just time. There's no way of doing that. Like in the amount of time you allotted yourself. I think the, the eyes could be a bit brighter, like quite recessed. So it makes sense physically for them to be kind of shadowed, but you want to just bake it and make them about as bright as that gems you have on her forehead, uh, just because it looks better. Um, and yeah, I mean, I can't think of anything you could have done any any quicker. I don't know if I could do something like this in the amount of time that you did it in. And you could easily do 12 hours to get to here, do another 12 hours, do another 12 hours, and still have things to do when it comes to a boss. So great work. I don't know if you said it's your first boss. No, but it's certainly a great exercise. And, and fair play for having the kind of dedication to actually time yourself and go through everything. Um, and great work on the skin overall, because that's the main thing like, uh, of the piece. And I think it's a real, real great success. Jim? Um, yeah, I don't really know why you would want to rush a bust or paint them super quick, because it just doesn't happen, I don't think, for anybody. But for 12 hours, this is pretty outstanding, I would agree. Um, so again, I, I had a quick flick through the, um, the log thing, and Matt picked up on the, the freckly thing. Um, which I thought was a great suggestion. Um, and yeah, I, th I think that's about the only thing about uh, picking different materials as well, doing um, TMM. Uh, also, completely agree with that. That's great. Um, but for the actual figure itself, if you're going to spend another 12 hours, where would I look? I would look at separation. Um, so some areas have separated pretty well, others not so much. Um, so, like these uh, trims around a chest. Uh, where the necklace uh, is interacting, there's no occlusion shadow there. This one across here could be dark around this gold ring, particularly on the rope. Um, so areas like that, just getting in there with like a panel liner or something, an oil, just getting in there really, really thin, really, really dark. Um, I think would be great. Um, pushing the contrast on the metals um, would be a good thing as well, because like these these front ones sort of look a bit metallic, but it's also a bit stony in some of the pictures. So just pushing the contrast up and down, um, I think would be good. And uh, but I think the number one thing missing for me is the life light in the eyeballs. So um, the light is kind of coming in very, very directly, like from the, the highlights on her skin and her hair particularly. So it'd be like quite central to the top of the eyeball, but slightly to the left on both of them, obviously. Always the same on both. Um, but that pure white dot, uh, I think that will instantly bring a lot of attention back to the eyes as Matt said they are a little bit darker than the one up here so you've got a perfect triangle here as well if you make that um, 
a similar sort of blue and add that white bright highlight in there that will really pop but yeah stunning work for 12 hours mate absolutely brilliant so um yeah uh do another 24 now and then it'll look utterly stunning i'm sure mm -hmm. that's always the rule isn't it as a uh, as our wise vince always yeah. said paint until you're insane and then do twice as much again so uh yeah good luck jonathan it looks great honestly well done um right, next is stephen banks uh was trying for a worn leather and good clean separation uh leveled up the syringe content oh yeah the syringes i remember the syringes from last month yeah um so any other comments so um yeah separation much better um definitely really really good the distressed leather is selling as well i'd probably go a little bit further and just put like really really hyper thin um scratches of like a bone um color in it not absolutely everywhere but just like these upward raised sections just hash scratch and then you could just have like one or two um big ones um but then glaze over them again with whatever you've used to do this um if you haven't got snake bite leather contrast paint get it because it's amazing and i love it um but yeah if you're doing scratch hatch highlights like that then glaze back in like water the snake bite down but it has an awesome effect when it's done um so that's my thoughts there um the syringes and bottles and pipes and stuff look much better so like um all horizontal with the ground now so that's that that's really good i think you could push the white highlight in it a little bit and push the like shadows of the bottle like towards the top a bit darker in each case but generally uh like the the improvement is massive it's really really good so um yeah keep pushing on those they're a really hard thing to get right um but you're very very close now to these selling it beautifully so um yeah well done mate that looks good uh what else did i have um face looks like an old weathered and menacing so if that's what you're going for then that's great it could i thought um have this eyeball straightened a bit this one looks really really good like amazingly good and then this one is is off center and it's just kind of a black a black blob but this one's got a little bit more color in it i don't know if this is like accent or a trick of the camera or something but oh this this one just looks so much better with than this one so um yeah try and even that one out a little bit i think that'd be worth having another go at um to there and that that face then would be uh, this one is so menacing it looks like um it looks a little bit like the, the white walkers from um game of thrones like that icy blue but also really sunken in the head and just looking like half dead and very putrid and menacing it's a great skin tone so uh well done with all that um and then the only the other thing i wanted to um call out was like some of the gold had like spilled over in some areas so like there's a oh, there's a little bit of spill here and like in this little crevice here and it's just like a little bit of wash would probably just tidy that up um but that would definitely be worth doing um i think so uh yeah i like this brain thing in the back here i like the way you've done that that looks cool as well uh so well done there um but yeah on the whole he looks um suitably menacing and disturbing uh so yeah it looks really good um the metals i did think um they look it looked like the paint had gone on a little bit thick i mean i've, I've not painted this i don't know what the sculpt is like but it looks like it, it's like gone on a bit clumpy in places so maybe watch out for that if that's not the model i mean if it's the model then obviously ignore me but um yeah i d don't know what metals you're using but i'll just suggest it anyway like the um the metal color series um they're really really good they're really thin you can glaze with them you can layer them you can even base with them they're really strong but you can dilute them and they don't like uh unbind the metal pigments from each other so uh yeah they're really good um so just a shout for those if you're still using crappy citadel metals which are horrendous in every way um so yeah uh yeah give that a go Stephen. um thank you very much i'll hand you over to matt now yeah great to see a man who can take notes these syringes look 800 percent better than the previous ones i agree with jim you can have a little bit of a like a pure black shadow in them say like so like the ones on his back up near the kind of gold because like obviously there like it's, there's no light can kind of get in or out um but like we're talking like a really thin sliver um and then you can have a little incredibly thin line of white to show the, the reflected light as well uh, in the center of the highlight there but like they're, 
definitely looking like syringes that have liquid in them. Um, on the metals, I would say a few areas, like they look generally quite good. I like how you got the darker steel separating now the gold. Um, but some of the larger areas of gold, like the two skulls and the skull on his walking stick, it's a lot of the same gold. Like it just looks like a solid coat of that one gold. So I'd add some sort of shade like the way you have on his um, like saw blade things. Either you could go for like a greenish wash just to kind of break it up, like in a red side of the skull and underneath. Or you can do a red brown. It's good. I'm thinking of Vallejo has Vallejo skin wash or whatever it's called uh, is like a really good tone for that. Or Reichland Flesh is the, the Games Workshop one. It's a bit more diluted. Uh, but yeah, great work. I, look, I like the way the, the armor looks as well, that kind of purple shade or color you pick for it. You know, the normal skin scheme. And also the glove, like the way you've done like the little highlights on his knuckles and stuff. That looks cool. So I just wanted to call that out. It's, uh, it's really good. I don't think it's that much more have a different kind of green for his kind of like underbelly and stuff which is really like nice and you have kind of a bit of a pattern going through the red as well so overall very strong and i like the way the um it's kind of a i like the way your horns are very interesting like they're not i haven't seen anyone do horns that had that much black in them before i think though you could have a little bit more of the white especially in places where uh, you only have the white like on the front, whereas a horn, like if you look at like a bull's horn or whatever, you know, it's going to be in bands. So there should be kind of like a, uh, a strip that goes around the back as well, which would be in shadow. Uh, just because that got a little bit confusing. At one point I thought I was like, are these meant to be black and that's like the white reflecting off them? Uh, but I think it's a cool look uh, and it's kind of unique for this figure. Um, and the gems, the way you've done those red gems, looks really good. I don't know if you have you have transmitted light coming through them. I don't think the area of the transmitted light would be so broad. It looks like you've got, like it's like diffusing the light and spreading it out more. I think it would be more like just like a little circle that is like the shadow of the light, of the gem. Does that make sense? Because it's not going to scatter light out. It's, it's like relatively clear. Um, and then we get on to the NMF, which is the, I mean, it's not really the elephant. That the figure itself is enormous. So I think kind of three things you want when you get in your NMM. You want to get a high degree of contrast in terms of levels, going from brightest to darkest. You want to get uh, your hue right, so your actual color. And then you want to get the uh, overall lighting, coherent light source. And so normally people slip up on the contrast, the level contrast, but I think you've got plenty. Like it goes from basically black to basically white, from like a buff color. But the hue is a bit off for me for gold because if you look at gold, it doesn't really go straight to black. It tends to, it's warm. It's got a very strong color of its own. So I would have use like a mahogany color, uh, or you can go for a greenish gold where the shadows go through, or the greenish color. I like red gold um, because it just, to me, it looks more like if you look at like that headdress thing, it could be like stone that has like different colored patterns in it. And um, because like just look up a, a, a gold ring or whatever, you see this has more shadows. Um, and then the other thing was the way the light kind of plays over the whole surface. Now this is a big challenge because this figure has a huge amount of gold on it, and all that gold is broken up with all the pattern and stuff. Uh, I think the places you have it most effectively are those little horn cap things. And then actually the red MM on that like angry face on his side, that looks really good because it's like a flat panel. Uh, but some of the other ones, I'm not sure where the light's meant to be coming from exactly. Um, and it's not like 
it doesn't look like it's coming from the same direction for every piece. It looks like you kind of pick like have stripes in it, but um, they're not like coherent. Um, which again, that's this is a, a bit of a a nightmare model for this. I know because I'm taking Blizzard Band, started doing some stuff in NMM. And just went, eh, I think I'll not do that instead. Um, it's because when you have all these different like a a surface where it's broken up into all these different facets, it takes it makes it a lot harder. You have to think about you have the macro lighting. So like if we look at his headdress thing, the semicircle, that's gonna have like radial highlights on it, like Captain America Shield. But then each of the little kind of like inlays that are on it is gonna have its own edge highlight. And then you're gonna have to worry about all the shadow areas, the edge highlights on them are gonna be less light than the edge highlights that are in the lid areas. And it gets very annoying. And the whole thing won't sell as NMM until it all sells as NMM. Uh, which is annoying when you have so much of it to do. So an alternative would be you could have less of it be NMM. So you could have like some of the inlays are like jade or something. You could have a bunch of straps be leather. And then it's much easier to get like, oh, this little bit of is gold. And then you just sell that as gold. Uh, and you don't run into that issue where one bit sells as gold that's lit from over here, and the other bit sells as gold that's lit from over here, and then together they don't sell as anything because your brain kind of knows that that doesn't make sense. Um, so yeah, it's very hard to do uh, NMM on this this kind of elaborate surface. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be too concerned that everything doesn't sell as NMM. I focus on the bits that worked, and then follow on from there. Um, and then I really liked as well his diorama base. Like it's almost there's so much going on in the figure I did, almost didn't see it. And then you know flicking through the pictures of like oh it's just like a river rushing through there, and you got like red little things in the like I don't know, bugs or whatever down there, and it all kind of you know it's perfect for the scene that it's in. Like he's this big red angry monster rushing out of the forest at you. So that's that's my notes. I really like him, Jim. Yeah, amazing looking thing. Um... Huge amount of effort by the looks of it has gone into this. Um, Cameron, the base is stunning, like the you know, the water effects and you know, the variation of foliage and the wood and stuff. Ah, uh, it's just it's just gorgeous, like even the lighting on it. Um, really cool. I agree with what Matt said about the metal, it is a challenge. I think for like a quick um, try and make it look better, get like um, get like quite a ruddy, warm, reddish brown. And like hyper thin, almost like filtering over these black bits. So like start your brush in the middle of the black, sweep it out to like the mid tone, and then sweep it back in, and then like deposit most of it in the middle, just to filter that black duck to a slightly warmer, um, to a warmer tone. Take a few passes at it. Try it in a small area first. Obviously, don't just go sloshing that all over all the gold. I'd take like a small bit and until you get like the consistency and the tone right. Um, I think that'd be um, the number one thing to make it look better. But like this, I think the, the collar actually is like the most um, like convincing NMM on it. Um, but as Matt said, like it, it is hard and you've done a really good job on it. So, you know, don't beat yourself up. The rest of the thing looks sick. It looks awesome. I love the variation, the striation. Um, just, just, and really interesting bones as well. So really, really good stuff overall, Cameron. Thank you very, very much for sharing it with us. Uh, right, Alexis Bonnier with um, a competition piece. How can I improve? Um, stunning work again, Alexis. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm now going to gush again, like I always do with Alexis' work. Um, so I think um, like the thing that stood out the most, and this is to take nothing away from the piece, um, because it is, as we always say, it's stunningly clean, well separated, great contrast, um, all beautiful stuff, really, really, really beautiful. Um, the gold this time around, in some places, looks a little bit desaturated for some reason. I don't know why, especially like around the shadows. So I think just bolstering some saturation on the gold. It might be the pictures, so forgive me. It, I don't think so. Um, but like the interference colours that you've got going on on like the metals uh, in general, secondaries and stuff like, especially on the like the butt of the um, the power axe thing. Um, really, really gorgeous. But I just think in some places, like 
it might have just washed out a little bit on the gold. I think what you've done with like the flesh and the steels and the bones and like the the wing membrane and stuff is all really nice. I think it might be the gold that just yeah just needs a little just a little glaze over it, just of like the like your uh, four or three tone, so mid to like mid shadow. Um, just to enrich the the colour of that gold a little bit. I, I think that's pretty much it. Then there's these things on the sword, um, which uh, I think they're like little skulls, and they're supposed to look like that. I think maybe you could brighten some of this up, because you can't really tell what's going on there with that detail. So uh, picking up these cracks, or just like highlighting the skull type things, or just doing something else with those, just to pick those details out would be cool. Um... Like the, the, an example down here of where the gold is really, really working, like down on the hoof. So like it's really, really working there. It's like the shoulder pads. Uh, I should have said before is where it's looking just a little bit um, washed out. Um, and then the only other thing really that I thought is that um, rocky uh, environment. Rock means dust. Um, a lot of blood dripping down everywhere. Um, he's exceptionally clean to be trouncing about and unless he's just like teleported into this area but like a little bit of something some grub or some some just like tiny little blood splatters um you know just like getting a load of blood gore or blood for the blood god on a paintbrush or a toothbrush and just just flicking it at his feet you know mask off the rest of it just so it, it just looks like he's stepped in something spatter it's got his feet are just a little bit too clean for me he's just a bit separate from his base and I, I like what you've done with the base it looks really really cool again um so uh yeah wonderful stuff i hope those few little points help um i know last month i didn't have anything helpful to say because you just did that to me down that blew me away so <laughs> yeah thank you again very much and i'll pass you to matt yeah, this is a super piece, Alexis. I think, yeah, your your NMM definitely come off as well uh, in the last couple of months. Uh, we're going to be real finicky and picky here because it's for a competition. Um, yeah, I think I kind of agree with Jim on the NMM. In a few places, it just goes a bit too into black on the gold. Um, but I kind of like, it looks more like brass to me as well. So, And it has your kind of signature use of interference colors. So uh, it's still good. It's got a, a very good standard to it. Especially on the the axe, I think that like looks pretty cool. And on the skull bracer on this one, um. So yeah, again, it's one of those things for NMM. It's hard to get every piece looking as good as every other piece. Uh, a couple of things I have here. I think the face could have more focus to it. It looks like it looks like you've used the same kind of range of colors for the skin everywhere. Um, and then because the face has all these like frags and dents in it, it ends up having more shadow than like the bicep, that weird wing bicep, that is just a big domed area. So again, you should probably think about like the macro highlights, like you should have a highlight across all of his brow, even though there's a shadow there. Like when you scale like this, you push your, your skin together, but light still gets into the crease. It doesn't go to your deepest shadow. And you should have like, Probably the highlights can go up to white around his face, like he'd be sweating or velocity or whatever, but something to make more focus be on the face than on the wings. But the red is obviously very eye catching, and you want the focus to be then there on the face. And um, another thing you could do is his cables, I think they're pretty important to the story. If you had them be quite shiny and have a halo of light around his head. That would then, you'd have like a concentric circles of light drawn our attention in space, which would be nice uh, as well. I think the, the water effect, like the blood is very cool. It's interesting basing for competition that like that. Um, and obviously use of your signature colors, like it's really good. The sword, his sword, I think, I don't know exactly what's going on with the sword because it has this pink color to it but it has these cracks in it that have like that same color so i don't know if it's meant to be glowing from inside or that light is reflecting onto it and it looks a little bit confusing to me so it might look a bit confusing to the judges i think also the, the cracked pattern running up the middle of the blade should have more definition and separation in there like some wash some like oil wash wouldn't go astray just to, to refine that because it looks a bit 
vague at the moment. And I think the kind of chaos star he has on the handle, you could pump some of the highlights out there just to make it look a bit more three dimensional. I think you're you're going you're not using your deepest shadow in between all those ridges quite as much as you could do on the sword, which is a relative line. Um yeah, that's pretty much it. I think it's a little bit difficult because his wings are so big and red, draw a lot of attention. But you got to think as well, you know, if he's got his arm fold, like his wings folded over, so there's not going to be as much highlight on the wing as on the face. And even if there is that much, just fake it and make the face brighter so that we can look at it. Like if it was a film, they would take another light and try to add his face to make it brighter than ever. So. Yeah, that's it. Great work. Looks really cool. Good luck in the competition. Let us know how you get on. Love to hear. And then we're going to move up to this fish dude. Where are you? Well, the, the Jasper Vinings or Vinings. Uh, oh, it's a piece for a competition as well. Feedback on the NMM. Otherwise, sell snail window for underwater miniatures. Okay. I have to get my leaving search physics hat on now. The snail window is when divers look up, they see a ring of light because light from other angles gets refracted away from them, uh, so it doesn't fall on them. Uh, but we're not looking up at this guy. So technically, snail's window would have not be a much effect on this. But the effect it would have is that um, all light on, if you're underwater and you're looking at someone else, like, you have a snail's window above you, and so do they, and, and so does every other point in the sea. So basically all light is coming down fairly horizontally, which means you're just doing a zenithal, which is basically what people do for zenithal anyway. It's not, it's coming mostly from the top. Um, so that's the effect it would have. But I assume you kind of want to fake snail's window, because you've got this kind of like swirly thing on the base. Uh, and if you want to do that, what I would do is put him on a much bigger base, he says for competition, so he could be on any kind of base he wants, assuming that he can in competition. But I'd put him on a big round base, and then I'd have him be at the center, not the like post, the column he's attached to, and then have the shadows like work out from the outside in in a circle, because that's what snails look like. Um, and also then for selling underwater stuff, uh, you can get what's called caustic patterns. They're caused by the ripples in the surface of the water. In the highlights have these like lines running through them. You don't see that much of that going on. Uh, and uh, a lot more blue. It's a bit tricky because you're doing red and yellow. But I think is the water meant to be green here? I'm not 100% sure. So what happens as well, again, if you're underwater, you'll have lots of light coming straight down on you. And then you'll have very deep shadows on the underneath of things. And then you'll have light that's scattered by the water coming up, so it's kind of blue. So you end up with this kind of almost horizon line where an object has bright highlight, then it goes into deep, really deep shadow and then secondary light coming up underneath that is blue. But all the light after a certain depth is blue anyway, because that's the one that's filtered out. So, so yeah, the answer is, I would, depends on how realistic you want it to be. I would just do the, the having Snell's window on the base, and that gives you people the impression that he's in a column of light, kind of like how in Jaws there's that woman swimming on the poster and she's in a column of light, uh, but even though actually underwater you wouldn't observe it that way. Yeah, and then on the NMM, um, I think it could have a lot more contrast to it. Um, it looks like you're not using pure white or like a blue white, Again, that's tricky because is your lighting situation blue, which it isn't because you've got a big red cloak, so that would be very desaturated if the water was blue. Um, and you want to have, so I would go with having, think about again what the broad area is. So you should have very strong highlights on like the tops of his shoulder pads, and some of those lines should just be almost entirely white. And then you should go have like an interfere a mid-tone and then back up to like secondary highlight on the horizontal bit. And uh, it looks like you've done that on the eel's head a bit, but it looks a bit more like you've gone for that outside, inside to outside highlighting where all the recessed areas are dark and all the exposed areas are light. Where it's really like the top should be a strip running down the center of his head that is very strong with this. 
and then the parts that are facing us, like us reviewing it from the side, will be pretty strongly lit. And then it goes dark around his jaw, and then you have a secondary light underneath his jaw. Um, it is selling at gold in places, but um, it kind of depends where it is. The more kind of ornate areas, you've got a lot of dark on there, and that's kind of making it look like a less reflective surface. Um, and it's quite yellow as well. So gold can be quite yellow, but really its true color is like a ochre. Um, so, and then you want to go up to like a, an off-white, a, a warm off-white. You use it very sparingly around here, um, but there should be a good amount of it in the surfaces that face upwards. I think it probably works best around it on his cloak here, um, because, I don't know, just the way you've done the kind of pattern to it and you've got a bit more of a run in each element and um, so that looks like quite strong and then yeah i was thinking it might be cool to have like a cast shadow on that column like as in should be much stronger lit on the side upwards and then the the sea floor around the column should be darker as well because again the light is going through him to get at it and um, yeah so hopefully that helps sorry if it was a bit too much like physics related. Um, Jim? Uh, I thought that was uh, stunning advice all round, um, to be honest. I had many of the same points, so I'm not going to go over the same ground again too much, but I think definitely bigger base, give it the sort of the vignette, like fake it. Um, as Matt said, I think it's pretty much the only way you're going to do the, the, the Snell's window effect. Um Second biggest thing for me would be everything about this model is um, lighting situation is very warm. So you've got yellow tones to the green. Um, you've got browns uh, in the gold. You've got a red cape. And this is all a challenge if you're trying to paint an underwater scene. Because as Matt says, the certain depths, all light is filtered out. So it's, it's just blue. So... Um, Unfortunately, you would need to to sell the underwater thing. It needs everything needs to be done in a very very cold white uh, light. So rather than paint warm golds, you need to research up on how to do uh, cold golds. Do that. Um, go cold green. It can be easily be done. You know, so aquamarines, teals, um, cyans, sort of thing like turquoise, um, in that sort of spectrum, rather than into the yellow uh, greens which you've got here. Um, same for the red. I mean, red's just a really challenging color choice. So if, if, as Matt said, that would have to be massively shadowed and desaturated if it has to be red. If this is a character and you're trying to depict him in the same way, if you've got the the choice, I would just recommend doing something a little bit more on the colder spectrum. Um, in general, purple would look really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, without going over anything that Matt's said again, um, but what you've done here, like um, with the eel, I think uh, the eel is a massive success in terms of like the contrast and smoothness and everything. Um, so I just really wanted to point that out. The other way um, I should definitely say the third thing um, to sell underwater stuff is have stuff on the base that's blatantly from a sea uh, environment. So things like you know crabs or shells flotsam seaweed coral you know just not all of that perhaps but just a couple of bits like that um just okay we're looking at a seabed here that will just really really help it as well um so yeah i hope that helps jasper um but very very good stuff overall um hope that's helpful um and then we were gonna tony submitted way too late didn't he matt so i think we're gonna hopefully do him first thing next month is that right yeah, and I think it wouldn't be fair, really, considering how much time we spent on it. And we didn't have as much time to really look over it before we did. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, submitted again next month, Tony. Really looking forward to doing it then. Yeah. Man. All right. Thanks a million. If you watched the uh, video through the end, um, you could do YouTube things if you want, but um, whatever. Uh, if you want to see your, your stuff, we'd be more than happy to take entries for September. The, event should be open very soon and uh, really we'll probably do it it'll only be about three weeks 30 days of september shouldn't be too long before the next one is up because we were a week behind thanks a million for watching we look forward to seeing you in the future